right. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Chris at World Music Nashville and Dax. What up? And we're here with Mike Caprice from Crusade and uh, Become the Night, the YouTube channel. So, uh, Mike, just talk a little bit about the, the channel first, because that's the, the one that's got off the ground, I guess, the most. Uh, the, the shortest way that I describe it is I bitch a lot about music and I play it every once in a while. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like your elevator speech and you can usually tell really quickly when you're talking to people about it, like if they get what you do. <laughs> right, <laughs> they'll, right. They'll, they'll normally end the conversation quickly if they think you're an asshole. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <clears throat> you know, started the channel, geez, six years ago, five years wow, ago. Wow, I didn't know it was that long. I think, yeah, I think it was five years ago. And um it was basically like, you know, every asshole moves down here, guitar player, like, oh, I'm going to make it. Coming to Nashville industry. to make it in the music, right. Yeah, you know, that story, that, that thing that fucking, like, <laughs> built this town over the last, like, decade and a half or some shit. Yeah. Got down here. Took me a couple of months to find a metal band. They weren't looking for a guitar player, but they were looking for a vocalist. And I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I'll try out for it. And I wind up going through, like, being their singer, being their bass player for a little bit, which I was just a disaster. And we rehearse and write for a year and never play a show. After a year. Yeah, that's a, you know, like come a, a year is, uh, in these times. It's that's a long time for yeah. them to not do anything, right? Like I, I, you were singing and not playing? Yeah. Wow, I can't imagine that. Yeah, now that same. I know you. Same. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you, you take what you can get. You know, as yeah. I'm sure you understand, I just wanted to play. I wanted to be collaborating. I wanted to make connections. And after a year, I was like, "Well, I just feel like I wasted a year of my time. I'm out of this shit. I'm done. Right. <laughs> like, I'm I'm doing my own thing." Do you still keep in touch with any of them? Uh, from time to time, yeah. I mean, some of them are still good friends. I mean, even um, uh, in Crusade, our bass player Steve is the oh, okay is okay. the bass player. That's how I met him. She's like, he's such a goober. But we'll get to him later. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, so. I was watching a lot of YouTube at the time because, you know, getting depressed, living by yourself, YouTube is kind of where you just default go to. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. So, um, yeah. So I was like, man, I could do this. I could definitely do this. You know, again, like everyone says that they can so do. So what were some of the YouTube channels that, like, inspired you? Or you're, like, you're looking at them going, like, yeah, I can do this. Uh, Game Grumps. They, they, they're a gaming channel. They're okay. a Let's Play channel. A lot of people find them to be really stupid, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, they're really stupid. But, <laughs> but How many followers are they, or subscribers? I think millions, they're, millions. I think they're like five million right now or something. Wow. Yeah, all they do is just sit down, play video games, and talk stupid. That's all they do. <laughs> so was it more something <laughs> that you could do by yourself because you were so disappointed in working with the yeah. band? <clears throat> I, I didn't know the best places to make the contacts that I needed to make. Cause I, I also did like a handful of open mics and got, God bless the singer songwriter community in Nashville. God bless them. But they are not the people that I need to be working with right now. Yeah. All 70 million of them. All, all 70 million <laughs> of them. All who know this, the same amount of music theory and have about the same amount of depth of writing ability, if that makes any sense. <laughs> it has not to be a dick, but I mean, I, I definitely wanted to do something a little bit more um, complex. Gotcha. So, was your YouTube even less about the music and just more about an outlet and kind of getting out of the Nashville thing for a minute? Uh, it was a lot more about actually building an audience for the music I wanted to release. I was like, yeah. okay, I could either dedicate all of my time to getting this music done, knowing full well I don't have the skill set to do this by myself, and I, I need some collaborators in some way. Or I can learn as I go, take some more time, and build an audience that is jazzed and ready to rock to listen to my music when I release it. And I mean, <clears throat> these aren't huge numbers or anything, but like, I think I released a single that was just like something that like started as no idea and completely done, written, mixed, mastered, all that stuff mm. in less than a week. And 
I think it has like, and this is less than a year ago I released it, I think it has like 200,000 streams on Spotify. That's amazing. You know, and, and that's like... That's, that's not a small number to me. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not like a mind-blowing number, but it's some, definitely substantial. But something that you cultivated on your own and did, that's a yeah. very significant number. I would be very proud of that. I mean, I will, I will say that's not all just my fans, although it is a, a large number of them too, but like that got picked up by the algorithm. Yeah. Spotify algorithm, which I don't know how the hell that happened, but you know, I'm fucking not gonna bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Top scientist here on it. <laughs> uh, speaking of fans, I, uh, I had a parent come in of two of your biggest fans. God, <laughs> they want to come by and like meet you and stuff. So I was like, I don't know when he shows up. He's a mystery. He just doesn't show up. <laughs> There's no telling. He's like a ghost in the wind or whatever. But. Uh, <laughs> We can work that out. Yeah, I know. It'd, be, it'd be super cool. Seriously. Yeah, they're young, they're young, you know, they're kids that, that they love oh, yeah. you, man. But anyway, uh, man, I think that's amazing what you've done, and like, just in today's music world, uh, you've kind of made your own success. You know, I mean, that's you, get, quit, you got there. to quit your day job, and yes, I did get to quit my day job. And that's pretty amazing. I I can't tell you how awesome that feels, and also how scary <laughs> that is at the same time. Like, it's a good scary though, right? Not at first. <laughs> Definitely not at first. It was a little bit like existential crisis. Like, like what am I producing? What am I making? What am I doing that's of value? I don't have something to like, like a structure above me to validate that. Right. You know, is that stress always with you too? Oh, all the time. <laughs> you just drink it away. You know? no, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you get used to it after a while and you start to better, like as long as you're constantly improving and really at least trying to be self-aware about mm. your, yourself and taking your audience feedback, you grow and you start to understand this stuff better to the point where you, you change and you're like, okay, I learned, mm -hmm. you know, and... What's the biggest thing? Like, I know you probably go through the comment section on your channel. God, or... yeah. You do? I've been trying to avoid that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are like some of the big things you've learned from that? Um, a lot of people, especially those who are super fans of particular artists, are not open-minded. And get real and, jacked when you say something about their artists. Yeah, like uh, Nirvana is overrated and Kurt Cobain is not a genius. Or um, The Doors sound like shit. <laughs> <laughs> sound oh like total God. shit. <laughs> you got a lot of flack for that. Jim, one. Jim Morrison sings like Bella Lugosi. Oh, I don't know. Maybe that's too old of a reference for some of you. I love Bella, Bella Lugosi. I like that reference. I actually know someone who watched their Nirvana episode, yeah, yeah. and like he changed his mind and says Nirvana sucks. <laughs> okay, that's it's not that Nirvana totally sucks. It's just that. Overrated They're, for their praise that they get. Definitely I overrated. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you made a really good point on that. It's like I'm episode. sorry, I'm not gonna praise you for a genius for being a genius for not trying hard. That's not that's not a genius thing. Mm -hmm. Or like fucking uh, Johnny Ramone being on the top being in the top twenty of the top one hundred guitarists for a Rolling Stone. Like <laughs> you you just happen to be the first dumbass to stumble into down picking all the time. Like, that, that doesn't take any special genius or talent. <laughs> that doesn't take jack shit. <laughs> you happen to be the first dumbass in a garage who happened to have enough money or you stole your guitar one way or the other. I don't know. I mean, you're a punk kid. Who, who fucking knows at that point? But, <laughs> like, legit. That, that's, not, that's not genius. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to credit him with, like... I wouldn't credit him with being on that list at all. I understand the influence. It's I get like, it. Yeah, it's really but, popularity, I think, that some of those lists are. I think a great thing about your channel, and I think you said something about this one day in, like, a dream theater, My Chemical Romance, something, and it was about... You don't really have to be qualified to have your own opinions. They're your opinions. You yeah, should, yeah. You should be Absolutely. able to stand on a, a video that I did talking yeah. shit on all the bands that I love. Yeah, even your favorite bands. Everyone yeah. should be. It's all a two-way street. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Like, I, by all means, talk shit about the bands that I love. What else is new? You know? <laughs> <laughs> just, don't, just don't hold any artist or any celebrity or any per, literally any person on a pedestal. Above anybody else, yeah? Yeah. Absolutely. So what's going on with your, your band, Crusade? We were rehearsing a ton until COVID hit. We actually had like a bunch of shows lined up. We were really excited to get out of, out of state finally. Um, which for, for the record, like for anyone who doesn't know, like we've only been really officially a group. We don't even have a full lineup yet, but um, officially a group since like April or May or something like that of last year. 
You've played shows, though. Yeah, you've yeah. We, we, we've done a number of local things and gotten way better attendance than we were anticipating. I've been to a couple. Yeah, Dax has even been to a few. Which I'm still trying to figure that mystery out, but thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. I, I like going to local shows, especially mm -hmm. if friends of the store and stuff. Yeah, Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Try to support our people. I, it seriously means a lot. Thank you. But uh, so yeah, there. I mean, all the craziness happened, and you know, no shows. So. So now we're just digging deep into finishing this album. We're a little bit behind our production schedule right now, so we need to get back onto that. And. Um, this, this current song that we're writing is a serious bear. It's my fault. <laughs> this is definitely my fault. Because I wanted this thing to be like a grand epic, you know? And that fine line between being a grand epic and being a, a long-winded, pretentious piece of shit mm -hmm. is very fine. <laughs> it's very, very fine. So we're, we're double and triple checking everything of what needs to be is there. Is this a 30-minute song? No. It, <laughs> it'll probably be, I imagine, somewhere between 12 and 15. How much, I love that. How much theory do you write with? Are you, are you setting uh, perimeters? It's, like, it, let's it's write always, in this mode. And it, it's usually thing. secondary for me. So you kind of write, and then you know what you're doing, but you're not purposefully, purposefully like, this is mixed There's a lot of times I don't know what I'm doing because I'm not that quick with it. Like, yeah. if I have to sit down and analyze it, I can. But like it's I just kind of like it, it, you're yeah I think I'm following what you're saying it's yeah the, and like my like our, my keyboard is Jesse knows theory a lot more quickly and he can he also actually he actually went to his guitar lessons in college unlike me so <laughs> so um he he is very facile at the instrument he can do all kinds of crazy fucking chords all over the place and between the two of us we've been kind of melding this one particularly together. Um, between, between him being very cerebral about it and me being a little bit more um, visceral, if that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah. More working class. <laughs> I don't know about that. So do you have an influence other than like the more proggy stuff? Oh yeah, totally. Um, love the Beatles. Beatles are fabulous. I believe. Well, I can throw this question out. Oh, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Beatles for sure. Um, I grew up with a lot of video gaming, so uh, Koji Kondo. If you guys are familiar at all, he composed the Mario theme, the Zelda oh, theme. Well, he's a genius. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The, the biggest shame is I don't think he's he's seeing a whole lot of intellectual um, is residuals he Japanese? from that. Yes, he's Japanese. And he gets no royalties from. One of the most famous songs in the last 50 years. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Like, at, at that point, that would be a crying shame. Someone needs to look that up. Yeah, that is. That's, like, whoever, that is a cri that's criminal. If yeah, that's that would the case. be. Yeah. Like, it's got to be getting something. Like, you hear, dun 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 dun. You don't even have to hit the low note <laughs> after that. You hear that, you know exactly what little chubby Italian plumber comes to mind. Yeah. Have you ever heard people cover that song? Oh, plenty of times. I mean, I, I, we're going to do one eventually. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like we open our shows up with a Super Smash Brothers medley, and like we have, we're working on version two of that right now, just because we have enough people who've seen it like three or four times. We're is like, Smash we got to fuck with them. Is that Mario Brothers? Smash Brothers is like a play on that. They basically take all of the Nintendo characters across like all the franchises uh -huh. and make them fight each other. Like Zelda. Yeah, yeah, it's all in there. That's but, cool. Like like fucking a bunch of a bunch of franchises that you didn't even know existed, and they'll put like all the characters in there. <laughs> it's, it gets a little obscure after I, a while. I, uh, yeah, I stopped at Atari. That shows how old I am. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah I would have said Commodore, but it's fine. Yeah, I've seen the Commodore <laughs> too, man. Commodore. Uh, okay, this is a question that was mailed in from somebody. <laughs> Do you think YouTubers are the stars of today more so than traditional artists and musicians? Um, <laughs> that's an interesting question. I don't feel like they're quite as comparable for multiple reasons. You're talking about the difference between a local radio disc jockey in the 80s and like a movie star in the 80s. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. You know? <clears throat> it hasn't reached that le it's It's almost regional. Like, if you were to compare stuff... I think the trajectory kinda, of YouTube has definitely changed over the years, though. So, so this is also another point that I want to pick up on. It's, it's kind of that right now, but it's not localized. It's localized to niches and communities. Mm -hmm. But 
the thing that I don't know if it's fully conceptualized yet or not, but um, the rise of the internet and the rise of social media has really broken down a number of the gatekeeping apparatuses for media and for distribution. So, <clears throat> you know, we still have a lot of those traditional media outlets and gatekeeping mm -hmm. apparatuses there. Mm -hmm. And that will create superstars. Like, our, no offense to Ariana Grande, she would not have done it by herself on a YouTube channel, I don't think. She had a whole lot of money behind her with a music label. She had the right connections. She probably worked really hard. I'll give her that. She probably worked really hard and made a career out of it, you know. But she, without a doubt, in my mind, she was propped up, you know. She's not sitting there behind a console making her beats. So you still absolutely think there's a place for the old model and labels and big money and tour I mean, support? Not like morally, but, right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as far as crossing over into those next levels. Yeah, I, like, I think that there's a place for it only because they're still trying to survive, but I don't think that there has to be. But even then, at the end of the day, I mean, then our next gatekeepers become YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, which we're starting to see them also pick winners and losers themselves, although not quite to the same level as... Um, music labels or media conglomerates. But yeah, so I mean, it, it's, it's very different because you're talking about highly decentralized fame versus highly centralized fame. And I, I just don't know that they're completely comparable to one another, but I, I, th I think that they both have their, their merits and, their, and the bad shit, mm -hmm. if that, that makes any sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you got a question? You do. I have I'm down of, to one. I have kind of an <laughs> unrelated question, but we get it in here all the time, and I think you'll be the perfect person to ask. I'm interested in this. You're a left-handed guitar player, right? Correct. That's true. Do, if you could do it over again, would you start right-handed, <laughs> or are you glad you went left-handed? <sighs> that is a really <laughs> tough question. Um, <laughs> I don't know the right answer to this. We get it all the yeah, time. Yeah, I get uh, parents come in. And say, well, my son's left-handed, but <clears throat> he hasn't started yet. He hasn't started yet. Should we start him on right? So, I don't know, like, because I don't have any data other than myself, and I don't know very many left-handed guitar players who don't flip it upside down. Ah, you know okay. what I mean? Yeah. Like the famous ones that I know, obviously, are Hendrix, but there's also Eric Gales. If you guys know Eric Absolutely, Gales, absolutely, yeah, of course. Yeah. Fire, bro. Phenomenal, yeah. Yeah, he, he's a lefty, but he flips it upside down. Mm -hmm. He strung, strung upside down. So, um, my instinct, obviously, was like, yeah, I want to play this way. This is the way I've always played air guitar. It's just um, natural. So natural. Yeah. And I remember when I when I first picked up a bass, is at my friend's place. His dad had a guitar, a bass, and uh, my friend played drums. He's like, here, put this bass on. I'm like. Uh, this feels weird. He's like, no, it's fine. I'm like, no, like I feel like I should be playing it this way. And I'm like, sitting here playing it upside down, doing this. I'm like, yeah, this feels way more natural. I can do this way easier. He's like, you're gonna learn this way. I'm like, when when he left, I was like, no, I'm fucking not. <laughs> 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 Absolutely not. <laughs> fucking this man trying to teach me rock and roll, being the man trying to keep me down. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> We're gonna make this guy a righty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but um, I, I kind of even want. I guess parents ask that because there's more right-handed instruments. Yeah, it, it makes just, it makes a lot of sense. Like, like honestly, the thing you would say is just like talk to your kid and be like, play some air guitar for me. And which way does he naturally hold it? That's the way he naturally wants to learn. Whether or not you should teach him that way is so a different glad story. So you're glad you went lefty. I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> it's so ingrained I mean, in him. Right. He wouldn't even have. I mean, a, I got this thing. Kind of because of it, but at the same point, like I, there is a bajillion other guitars I have not been able to play, and most likely will not be able to play in my lifetime. And, but you also have to consider, like being a lefty guitar player, is one other thing that separates you from your competition. It's very true. true. I mean, a lot of the that, game changers were left-handed. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever been to Southpaw? No, I need to. <laughs> I really want to so badly. I would love, I mean, 
<clears throat> Houston's a bit far away. Absolutely. But I've heard it's a really awesome city. I mean, just in general. I mean, we were looking at trying to set up a Texas tour for the fall anyway. So uh -huh. that's not going to happen now. But So here's another question. So you've got the gig of your life coming up, right? Like okay. at the... Why, I was going to say the White House. But <laughs> you, let's not, let's let's not, not go yeah, there. Let's, let's say somewhere really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and you only have $1,000. Let's just say $1,000. You have to buy either a cheap amp and a just incredible We're guitar. We're doing this now. All right. Have you done this before? No, we had the conversation before. Oh, we did? Yeah. I don't remember. Uh, or a uh, expensive... Uh, what did I say? Expensive first? guitar and cheap amp. Yeah, I know, or I know cheap amp, mean. expensive guitar. I don't remember asking you this. Oh, uh, we were we were gonna make a vi video trying to test it out. Oh, thing. okay. And we yeah, probably yeah. still should. I'd be interested to. Yeah, do that. yeah, yeah. We were just throwing out ideas. It's it's my favorite question. So, if he cases his stuff. He came up with this. <laughs> so, in my personal opinion, especially with the music that I play, for sure. Um, I would definitely take the expensive amp or expensive rig and take a cheaper guitar, provided that that guitar can stay in tune. That is the that's the key. Th th yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it, baby. I mean, and you can find really cheap guitars that stay in tune. I was talking just this week with Dax. We were talking about uh, when we were talking about like famous guitar players and while they have a certain guitar, you kind of identify them with. And just on based on conversations I've had with people, it's like. Nine times out of ten, this is the one that stayed in tune. Yeah, yep. absolutely. I've yeah. talked to pros. I've talked to touring guys. Like, oh man, I just I play it. It's the one that stays in tune the best. It's amazing how many don't stay in tune. It is kind of surprising. Kinda, yeah, kind of yeah. surprising. It is kind of like most. That. Of this them. one mostly does, except for the E flat string. Oh, is it E flat? It's either E flat or B flat. One of the two. Which I mean, like I'm, I'm in C standard for anyone who's wondering. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that thing is such a bitch. Not a fan. So you got, I'm with you, man. I go really great amp and just hope I can find something for a hundred bucks. <laughs> Cause like, I mean, it doesn't matter what you play. I mean, and this is not to talk shit on Joyo. So not to talk shit at all, but like you plug a $10,000 guitar into that Joyo, it's still going to sound like a Joyo. I gotcha. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you plug a $250 guitar into that Friedman, it's gonna sound like a fucking Friedman, right? You know, like, I think we've had. It's gonna yell. Surprisingly, that's the point I make. But like, I think it's been like fifty-fifty on that question. I would we grab ask like, everybody. That. I grab a Nash and a Katana, or a Charvel and a Katana, and I'd be good to go. Okay, when you okay when you say Katana, you talking the amp? Uh, the, the fifty, the Katana fifty. The little, the little tiny thing. Little two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. I've done a bunch of shows with it. Dude, with, all right. the all right, you're, with the fifty. All right, you're 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 not allowed to run out the back of it direct into a PA. <laughs> oh no, I've never done that. Nah, dude, uh, no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nah. But how how big how big was the speaker? In the Katana fifty, is it a ten? It's either a ten no, or a twelve. No fucking it's way. A 12, it's a twelve inch. Twelve. Rob says <sighs> yeah. twelve. Is this one twelve? No, I'm sorry. I, I can't. The regular basement. Not abide this. The basement east. The Mombrian. With that amp. You know, maybe maybe, the I'm, analog maybe room. I'm full of shit. I play the analog room. Y'all let me know in the comments. Room. Maybe I'm full of shit on the katana. You gotta open it up and program it. You can't use the default uh, settings. Obviously. Yeah. And even then, I still think that that's totally fucking cheating. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I mean, yeah. We it, should it, that's, put, that's, less, that's less an amp and more of an amp modeler, if that makes any sense. Probably. Yeah, at that point. At but the, I'm old you're... and it's light. It's easy to carry. <laughs> Which in Nashville seems to be, like for gigging people in Nashville, that seems to be the, the way to oh, get yeah, light. Yeah, every, Everybody's going light, easy. I've, I've seen a ton of katanas around town, and they sound great. They really do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he, he raves about them. And, I mean, we sell a lot of them, man. Not surprising. Yeah, we're sold out of them. Right Keeping now, the fucking store open, we, man. Yeah, absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely. But back to the tuning thing. Oh, like, yeah. Like... Um, I talked to it, it's. You said it's amazing how many guitars don't stay in tune, and I, I mean, I get that as the tech here at World Music Nashville. <coughs> that's like the probably my biggest uh, comment. Hey, this won't stay in tune. All right. You, so, what's what, your what, what's your solution for? Uh, that? The, I mean, there's could be several different things. Change the keys. Uh, I even have sometimes I have people move down a gauge or move up a gauge. It's kind of all over the map, man. Is it depends on what can, kind of guitar. Can I mean, you truly ever fix that? 
I, I, <laughs> he's like, he's like, I, I don't want to lose the I business. I want to say yes <laughs> every <laughs> time, 100%. <laughs> like, not to throw you under the bus <laughs> there. I yeah. Start out, guys. Yeah. <laughs> From a we physics standpoint. We just had a fucking 50% drop in tech sales. <laughs> yeah. I like to think that I 100% Not can. you personally, but just yeah. the laws of physics. Sometimes with a guitar, it's just inherent in it. It's just yeah, the way it was either I, I engineered understand. or that, you know, there's just something wrong. I, yeah. Like, there, there is a brand of guitar out there that has a certain model that even... And because I know the people, and you probably know who I'm talking about, I know the engineers that work there, and they say, this guitar has an inherent engineering flaw. It's never going to be right. And, yet, and they and sell yet, them. And yet and they sell it. They sell it I like know. I cakes. already know who this brand is. <laughs> <laughs> they know. sell it like hotcakes, man. Yup. Yup. You know, I know exactly what this brand is. <laughs> people get around. I mean, there's certain things you can do. You know, you create more tension. On, I mean, there's... It's kind of all over the map, though. I, I feel you, yeah. I feel you. But uh, what's your take? You've been in Nashville for a while. You're successful in metal and all that. What's your take on kind of the metal and rock scene here versus the kind of pedal tavern, Bud Light, bro country thing here? Um, I think it has a great scene here, I got to say. And the every crowd in Nashville is a loving, awesome crowd. And people in the city, thankfully, actually give a shit about live music. And go see it. And actually go see it. Yeah, they, they want to have the experience. They want to support their people. And, I mean, there's a lot of talent here. Mm -hmm. Way, oh my way God. more talent here than almost any other city Probably in the world. pound for pound. It has to be the most best in the country. Concentrated talent Easy. in the country. Easy. And that, that's for, like, so many different genres. Uh-huh. So many. Yeah, in fact, I just talked to somebody from D.C. who was, uh, they were visiting down here, and they were thinking about moving, transferring to a university here in town, they were like, oh, I don't know about the music scene. You guys don't have a lot of variety of bands that come through. And I'm like, wow, what? this guy is dumb. <laughs> this guy is dumb. I was like, I have seen, like, especially in the last three or four years, I've seen so many large prog metal acts come through here on a regular now. This is a spot to be. To I come say through. every oh, genre, absolutely. Dude. Every genre. Oh, even, for sure. Every, but, even hip hop. Like, as obscure as progressive metal is. Yes, you know? absolutely. Like, they're I mean, coming through. And I was, yeah, I was <laughs> flabbergasted at this comment. He was telling me all about the D.C. area. He's like really into punk rock and I was like, That's he was that. listing off There's bands. There's his first fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> he was into punk rock. But he was listing off bands and I was asking Hank and Hank was like, Oh yeah, they, I saw them here like three months ago. I was here, you know, they were here last year twice. And yeah, this guy just had a clue. But the point, I, I said, man, I think pound for pound for pound, Nashville has one of the best music scenes for anything. For music. anything, oh, yeah. any you, night of the week, you can go oh, yeah. out when there's not a virus, <laughs> when there's not a virus. and, and virus. see somebody. Don't you think? Oh, one thousand absolutely. Thousand percent. I mean, like, I'm. I I don't know if I can necessarily speak for the entire world, but I'm gonna go ahead. And take a leap of faith. Do it, baby. Best city for music in the world. I, I agree. Best one. If dorks like us can do stuff in music <laughs> here, they must be pretty successful. <laughs> <laughs> must be a pretty good city to do that. I think so. <laughs> I'd say that to people all the time that come in the store. And they're like, man, how's it going? You, do you love this? I'm like, dude, I'm not supposed to make a living working on guitars. You know, this is ridiculous, man. I'm, I'm covered up with work. Yeah. You know? I yeah, mean, there's not too many towns I think I tech. And say they're just absolutely covered up. How many people. towns can you get like a dozen restrings every day? In a day. I mean, it's wow. just constant. And that's just you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Jeez, I mean, absolutely. I mean, not to, not to be a, a dick, but like people got to learn to change their strings. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> you got to bleep that. We, right. yeah, I mean, Floyd, Floyd Rose, I'll give him that. Floyd Rose sucks. I get Floyd Rose's, yeah. I'm sorry, All man. All the time. But, you know, I... I have people come in and say, hey, uh, can you show me how to restrain? I'm like, <laughs> that's adorable. Oh, uh, but... man, I don't know if I'm going to have time. Yeah. You're, right. <laughs> You're right. I am pretty smart. <laughs> I'll take yeah, that. I mean, we get, I get a ton of that. Uh, I mean, you know, I get a ton of everything. Yeah. But and I, I can't <laughs> imagine being a tech and like. Get, you get you get a ton of everything. I don't want to talk about the project, but the project oh, that we're working on right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to talk about That's everything. Different. That's different. <laughs> One day, your next visit, hopefully, that will be something we're like. Dude, oh yeah, no, I would. Um, like a, you know. Not going to disclose what it is, other than it is a special guitar that we are building. Absolutely. 
and that I'm I am super stoked about. Fucking insanely stoked. Yeah, this is gonna be super cool. Oh so my gosh. Let's let's say like the next time you do this, that's gonna be the time. Word. We're gonna blast that everywhere though. That's gonna be huge. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I'm gonna do everything in my damn power, man. Absolutely. That's gonna be super cool. Do you have any more questions? I think I'm good. I think I'm good too, man. I'm really you take good. a shot. Oh, again. Okay. Or just do that. <laughs> I have a couple you can ask. Okay. Go for it. Go for it. Okay, yep. let's start with an easy one here. I... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Kemper, Helix, or no? All right, so you said Kemper, Helix, or no? Or no. You don't... You fucking sacrilegious son of a bitch not mentioning <laughs> Fractal? Oh. No Fractal? Oh. Okay, 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 okay. All right, I'll... If you had a modeler, <laughs> which one would it be and why? Uh, all right, so I, okay, the, um, up front, I use Helix. So, I mean, that was mostly to do with the cost. I will put that out there. I haven't used Axe Effects enough to really say for sure whether or not I would go with Axe Effects. Axe, Axe number, like Axe digit, you know what I mean? Like Axe 3, Axe 8, Axe all that. Probably not going to be running with that. But Axe Effects, uh, that one I think is pretty freaking amazing. I haven't done enough AB with that in the Helix yet and seen all the different options that are in there to really come to a conclusion. But for user friendliness, hands down, the Helix, do Helix dominates. And um, on top of that, they, they have a better price point. And I think that if you're a gigging musician who doesn't need everything, just needs a handful of stuff. I shouldn't even say a handful. There's a lot of stuff in there. It just needs like a handful of stuff that you can play any genre, any gig you have to fill in for, or you know, need like five different patches all with different pedal board setups. I mean, I, I would definitely say Helix myself. Oh, and also Kemper, interesting that you can, well, it's not modeling, what's the right word for it? Uh, Picture, picturing. Profile? Profile. 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 Yeah, that's it. It's interesting that you can profile that stuff, but <clears throat> I've heard so many horror stories of people buying these packs of profiles and being like, it sounds nothing like what that dude said it would sound like. And beyond that, their effects are kind of crap. I've heard that their effects are really not good. Sorry, Kemper. <laughs> okay, next question. If you had, uh, what's your current pedal board rig? Maybe just keep it down to three pedals. And what do you normally grab for a gig? All right, if I had to keep it down to three pedals, it would be the Line 6 Helix. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, oh, which wait, pedal, wait, wait, oh. which effect in there? Okay, okay. There's which Helix. Oh, okay, oh okay. I, I, got like, I got like one of the first ones that came out, I think. Yeah, yeah, I got like one of the first. Like, <laughs> when I had to go update it, I had to call tech support at Line 6 because it was like, it's not letting me update, man. He's like, what model do you have? I'm like... 1.0.2, he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I have, like, one of the first ones. It's the, uh, the floor unit. It's not the, not the rack unit, which I'd like to get the rack unit eventually. Um, but the actual effects that I use in there, I typically run the modeled 808. Um, and if I'm, if I'm running it four cable through my Friedman, I will do the, the Timmy, uh, you know, the Timmy distortion into the 808, into the front of that amp, come out the effects loop, I typically have, uh, depends what, um, what type of effect I'm going for, but some type of modulation, usually relatively light, just to kind of smooth it out a little bit, into an EQ where I boost some low mids, and I think I do a little bit of a punch at 2K, and there's some other like adjustments in there too. Dip out some of the bass on the, on the front of the amp, and there's something else that goes on there too, and I completely forget now. But like, I have I have like a whole bunch of shit that I that I use in there for different reasons. One of the things that I use on there too a lot is the um, the the dual pitch thing, except I keep it like really hot. So then you put it like like a like a one step down, or sorry, half a step down, and then just play some just like whack shit and like diminished, you know? <laughs> like, sounds wicked. Uh, sounds great. We we have a couple songs that are written for that, but um. Oh yes, let's do it. Um, I guess how has COVID affected the everyday working musician, and how do you feel about it? So, uh, 
what I mean by that is some people have told me I'm actually making more money than when I did <laughs> That's that's really interesting. Um, yeah, I'm well, interested to hear your take on so that. So I, I am not the everyday working musician. I will put that out there because I don't play out as often and I spend a lot more time talking about it than I do playing it, at least publicly uh, talking about it than I do playing it. Um, and... From what I've seen and heard from a lot of my friends, it's definitely hurt their bills a lot because it's not easy to make a quick adaption when you're a gun for hire into having a social media presence. You've made your career out of not being the center of attention, out of supporting people mm -hmm. who are the center of attention. Now, if you're talking like people like like Andy James, you know, Andy James, I mean, he lost his gig income, which is awful, but... Um, he had, he already has a really great built-in following that he, I don't know if he did or did not utilize it, but he could have totally utilized it, you know? So for me, I actually saw a bump in revenue. Oh, okay, initially I saw a massive drop in revenue, but that was for a completely different, unrelated reason. I was not happy about it. But yeah, I've seen a, a that was pretty like business. You, that, YouTube shit. Yeah, yeah, YouTube yeah. shit. Um, Nothing to do with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I actually saw a pretty big increase in revenue from COVID. But I'm also a YouTuber. So, you know, people cooped up in their houses, <laughs> not doing shit. So you started the virus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mike, what's, no. your advi no. <laughs> <laughs> what's your advice for uh, people who want to start a YouTube channel and YouTubers and all that stuff? Like, um, you did it. Like, how did, what would you say to those guys? If I, if I had to sum it up into your keys to success, um, I'll try to do it from least to most uh, important. Okay. First is having a certain amount of self-awareness. Um, if you're not self-aware and you're not able to properly judge who you are, where you fall in the grand scheme of things as far as um, talent and understanding compared to other things that are out there, you're not going to be able to improve yourself. Um, two is find something that you're honestly and truly passionate about and don't just do it for the fame. If you're doing it just for the fame, it'll destroy you. <laughs> um, work really freaking hard. <laughs> yeah. You have to work super incredibly hard. I was pooling regularly 50 to 60 hour weeks, maybe even a little bit more when I was working a day job. Mm -hmm. I was doing it consistently, and I have, like, quote-unquote lost friends, and not really lost, but there, there's a bunch of friends who are like, you never hang out anymore, you never want to do this, that. Like, I have goals, asshole. <laughs> <You know? laughs> not to be a dick. You know, I don't, I don't drink my fucking paychecks away anymore, yeah. I mean, even though I did drink a lot, but, like, I don't, I don't just go and... And drink Your time my, is more valuable to yourself now. Yeah, man. And that, that's okay. We'll add that to the list too. We'll make that second from the top. Value your time as much as you want your time to be fucking valued. If you think that you that's are good, worth, good, good if you think that it. you're worth a thousand dollars an hour, why are you spending a thousand dollars playing a video game for an hour? <laughs> Dead ass serious. If yeah. you if you think that's what your time is worth. Why are you doing it that way? Now, I mean, you obviously want to balance that with a healthy, healthy balance of, you know, life and work, obviously. But if you think that you're better than the shitty fucking job that you're working right now, make it happen. Yeah. Value yourself. If, if you hold your, like, um, what's the word that I used? I had like a phrase for it. P people will only take you seriously if you start taking yourself seriously. And that doesn't just mean like, oh, like I'm big shit or whatever. Like, no, like hold yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. If you really take yourself seriously, you will hold yourself accountable for the stupid shit that you do or for the mistakes that you're making or for the gaps that you need to fill in order to achieve your goals, plain and simple. And the last one, and this is hands down the most important one out of any of them, is perseverance. Um, you can put in a lot of hard work, but if you don't stay at it, mm -hmm. if you aren't committed to it, you will not succeed. Or I shouldn't, shouldn't say will not. There's a high likelihood that you will not succeed. Um, of every quote-unquote successful person across the entire fucking planet of multiple different industries sure. or yeah. aspirations, Anything, yeah. 
the biggest crossover, 88% crossover, was perseverance, was the common factor. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no such thing as an overnight success. Right. You have to stick to it. Unless you're a dumbass piece of shit who happens to do something stupid <laughs> and you blow up overnight, but that's not really success. Yeah, but you that, got that's, that's a flash in the pan. You gotta, you gotta, yeah, there's, you can't give up if you're not successful in the beginning because... If you're doing it for the reasons you stated before, you're just doing it. You have to really, you have to really care about it. Yeah, you really do. You're doing it or, you or care you, that much about or it. Or you have to be that big of a narcissist that you really want fame that bad. <laughs> wow. I mean, I mean, if you're a megalomaniac on that level, I mean, just, just don't, <laughs> just don't, please. You know. <laughs> and on that fine note. Yes, that's a, that's a good spot. All right, man. Mike from Become the Night and Crusade. It's been great having you, brother. You're a good friend of the Dude, store. Thank, we, thank you. We love it when you come by. I'm going to throw this right here at this camera and say we are out of here. Dax, you want to say anything? I'm good. You sure? That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Cool.